So good morning, good morning. We are in our strong hips, back and core. And whether you're here in our live class or you're watching um, the video, come on in. So the first thing we're gonna do is take a big drink of our water. Swirl it around. <clears throat> then we're gonna turn off our phones. And I'm gonna do another swirl around because it was so fun on the first time. Okay, so as I, <clears throat> excuse me, as I was saying, I think today is pretty challenging. I did the class yesterday, um, and uh, to me, these are the really challenging postures. Uh, so, you know, honoring where you are, honoring how you're feeling, and uh, playing with this idea of going in instead of going out. Remember yoga is for our mind. And so if we're in a posture and we want to quit, we want to quit and we want to quit. That's what we get to see about ourselves. How you practice this, how you show up for this, how you do this is how you do everything. So this is a yoga practice where you get to explore how you do this chatter in your mind and how you how you show up and then you can make the adjustments so that you go back there in a different way. As I say that, as I say go in, not out, as we were just mentioning, if it's painful or if you're afraid of injury or something like that, yes, of course you come out. But you have to, I always say that the fine line between being careful and being fearful. You don't want to be afraid, right? You don't want to be afraid. You want to be careful. You want to you know, whisper, how is this? Can I go a little further? And the body says yes or no. And then you honor that next unfolding. Okay. We are definitely going to need blocks today and we are definitely going to need a strap. And welcome yourself to the mat. Welcome yourself to your practice. <clears throat> Today's pondering is a parigraha, which is non-attachment. So one of the sutras tells us that when we can appreciate, be grateful for all that we have, you know, all that we have, all that is, Right? We live in that sense of meditating. So oftentimes meditation for us to remember our deeper self, our truest self, as yoga would say, the meditation mind takes us to know our true nature, right? After the thought. And so then if we could just sit in appreciation of it's so nice to be here on the mat. It's so nice that the weather is beautiful. It's so nice that you're here with us. It's so nice that my body works. I feel so happy that I had a good night. When you just live in that, you live in that meditative state. So today's practice is on this idea of letting go of things you think you own, right? Things you think own. I own my husband. I own my kids. I own my, um, I'm sorry. Hold on. What's going on here? Uh, people are, can you hear me? I hear that the audio is bad. Um, You're just kind of, um, just a little like in and out. It's not gone. It's just like okay. wiggly. Okay, thank you, Tracy. I'm going to take this out. I just said it sounds kind of crackly when you're um, sitting down. When you come up to the camera, it's fine. You know what? It's because this little antenna, I, 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 that's my mistake. I always forget that I got to look like I'm a worker. Okay. <clears throat> like a worker. Okay, back to, back to the loving place. Thank you, Tracy, for that little red, red but button. And I know the camera's not focusing. Anyway, so we're going into this idea I'm assuming this is better. We're going into the idea that we don't own anything. So I don't own my husband. I don't own my children. I don't own this yoga mat. I don't own my car. 
right? I don't own how other people show up. I don't own how the politics should go. Like this idea of really, truly letting go, releasing this attachment. Because truly, we have no control, right? We can control our thoughts. We can control our meditative state. We can control the idea that we are beyond the thoughts. We can control what's happening within in many ways by what we think, but not externally. So that's the ponder today. So gently close your eyes. <clears throat> Close your eyes. And watch the flow of your breath. Watch the flow of your breath. Like you're riding a surfboard. Inhale, taking that breath up the wave. Exhale, letting it ride down. can't grab the handles of the air when you're surfing, right? The current of the wave is much more powerful than you are. You know that. So you're already humbly riding. You have to be in the moment. You have to flow with what's happening in the real time instead of the expectation or the attachment of how it should be because how it should be is not how it is. What if we don't own anything? You don't own your dog. Or your home. Or your clothes. What if you were really free? What would that feel like? If everything around you was being borrowed or shared with you, the people you love people you're married to or that you reside with, they're just sharing their time with you. As we continue these breaths, you're breathing, you've got this nice Samavriti pattern, this equal inhale, equal exhale. Sometimes we have a tendency to want more not only do I need this shirt, but I like it so much, I want to buy it in every color. Or we don't know what's in the fridge, so we go to the grocery and we just buy whatever we think we need and we realize, oh, I already had that. This desire for more, and more, and more, and more. And in our inner circle group next month, we do decluttering or no, that's two months away, we, we start to focus on letting go of stuff. Because just like the breath, if we hold that inhale and we never let it go, we can't get another inhale. Or if we hold out that exhale and we don't let it go, we can't take in another inhale. We want to be in flow. I spend my money, I make my money. I give my love, I receive some love, right? Being in the flow, not hoarding, not grasping, not grabbing, not attaching, not expecting. What would it feel like to feel free? 
So spending a minute here, that's our focus today in our physical yoga class or asana class. What do you need from today? Take about a minute here, flowing with the inhale, flowing with the exhale. And talking about the yielding. It's continuing with that, but now it's more in a mental way. We're yielding the idea that we own things or that we can be owned by our boss, by our kids, by our parents, friends, government. And for these last three or four breaths, please begin to settle in on your mantra, the purpose of being here today in our class. What do you need from me? What do you need from me? What do you need from this yoga mat? What do you need from this body-mind connection? What do you need from our community? And as you settle in, imagine again that surfboard, just riding the flow. What do you need? When you have it, we'll bring our palms to touch. Please thumbs against the heart. Remember the challenge that you're creating today. Remember the mantra. Remember your mission or your intention. Repeat it to yourself a few times. And then bow the chin to your chest. Open your eyes, see your fingertips. Remember this promise that you're making and then gently release down and relax. Okay, so a couple of lessons here, a couple of uh, topics. First, we wanna make sure that we are level in our pelvis, right? So we're gonna be focusing on the laterals, on the side body. And what happens usually when we do our side body is we also like to twist it. And that is the more, more, more we don't wanna do today. I want us to really feel this plane, this front plane and this side plane. So we don't wanna be leaning and twisting, okay? So we're really gonna focus on keeping the front plane open rather than trying to twist it to the ceiling or twist it to the floor. Front plane staying open throughout our class so that we can be breathing into our side bodies. That's number one. Number two, in order for that to happen, we need to be noticing where our pelvis is in space. Okay, so that's what those, those areas will be what we talk about, all right? And as I said, it's gonna be a challenging class uh, physically. We're gonna really be holding and deepening into those postures. And so the way we transform is we push against the comfort zone. The way we transform, the way we transform is pushing up against our comfort zone. So when you start to get pushed, right, uh, if it feels painful, back off. If it feels painful in the mind or in the, I don't want to do this anymore, then you're going to push through because then it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Okay, here we go. Take your um, bottom out and we're going to spread our legs. Upa Vista Konasan. Okay, Upa Vista Konasan. So our legs are nice and open and we're going to take our strap here. If you need to continue to sit up on something, then please do. Um, but otherwise we're gonna to try to level out that pelvis. So we have our strap here. We're gonna take our two blocks and we're gonna turn on our thighs, our quads. 
these get very lazy, very lazy. And so I want you to be encouraging your kneecaps to be pulling up. We're not locking. If you feel like there's pain in the back of the knee, soften it a little bit, but really engage these quadriceps. Big inhale, feel the sits bones are nice and level. Exhale, start to tip it over. Tell me a story. Your heels are pressing down, the toes are pulling back, the kneecaps are lifting up, and those quadriceps are turned on. If you were to poke those thighs, you would be very strong. Another eight breaths, maybe you'll take your blocks down a little bit. You're trying to feel yourself pulling out of the waist Quads are turned on, turn them on, turn them on. If you feel like you're leaning on one sits bone more, more than the other. We want to be using our powerful exhale so that we can use that powerful inhale. You don't need to go more into the posture, right? It's not a more, more, more situation. It's a be here now situation. Keep the engagement, keep the integrity. Two more breaths. Beautiful, and come on up, come on up. Remove that block. We're gonna take our strap here and hook it around the right foot, okay? You can go as tight or as loose as you want to. And this is where it gets challenging, right? So we wanna keep the side bodies level. Some folks may wanna take a block here, all right? Turn on those quadriceps. They probably won't stay lit up if you, if you don't uh, engage them. They'll probably be soft and they'll fake it. But you got to keep them turned on. And we're going to start to bring our side body down. We're not super warm yet, so this may be a sort of a chilly approach. Notice if you're trying to turn the ribs to the ceiling. Notice if you're trying to turn them towards the leg. Try to face forward here, dropping that left sits bone down. You can grab the foot. You don't need the strap. If your elbow can't come to the floor, you could use your block. We're just checking things out here. Keep dropping that left sits bone. Pull those quads up. Really feel that fire. And then find the front plane here. Keep them engaged, quads up, lift those kneecaps up. Keep dropping down. Good, and gently come on up. Let everything be floppy. Switcheroo. Okay, sit up nice and tall, right sits bone dropping down. See how this feels. Notice if you're trying to twist. Turn on those quads. Drop that right sits bone down. Just check and see how you're feeling on this side. Using the leverage of the elbow and the leg together to feel that pulling 
heart forward, straight forward, no rotation here. You're doing your very best to keep this front plane open. You don't need to do more. You just need to be here now. You don't need to do more. Just activate those quads and be here now. Beautiful. Remember your mantra. Keep that calm and steady breath as we make our way up. Beautiful. All right. We're going to take ourselves into hands and knees. Coming into hands and knees. Start to rotate your spine. Finding cat cow where you reverse the spine and you back bend the spine, just playing with that action. Our down dog pose, which we're not there yet, we're getting ready for it. The primary focus in downward dog is to lengthen your spine. So you have all this wonderful gravity help. We use the arms and the legs to do the primary focus, which is that lengthening of the spine. <clears throat> Let's try that. Spreading our fingers, equal space between each and every finger. When you're ready, go ahead and take yourself up to downward dog. Bend the knees if you want to. Outer heels are dropping down plus that big toe. We've got a slight little pigeon action there on those feet. Keep the knees bent if you want to. Put the majority, not the majority, put quite a lot more weight into your legs than your hands. Can you feel the engine of the legs holding this dog a little bit or medium amount more than the hands? So we're taking some of the weight out of the wrists by really driving that front of heel down. Depending upon who you study with, there is an idea that the heels are not meant to be on the floor. Some of us can put them on the floor, but the idea is that energetically we want to be rooting through the energy of the heels rather than them actually coming down. So depending upon who you study with, that might be it. Now, as we stay here, and if you need a break, you come down and come back in. As we stay here, I want you to gaze at your arches of the feet. So lift all 10 toes here. Lift all 10 toes and feel the inner arches of the feet dragging up the inner knees all the way to the pelvic floor. So there's a rocket ship there at the arches of your feet. Those quadriceps are lifting up. You're pulling those kneecaps up. So you're really charging up these legs. The majority of that weight is in the legs rather than the wrist. Two more deep breaths. Use the arms and the legs for the primary focus, which is lengthening that spine. One more deep breath. And beautiful, go ahead and put your knees down for a moment and sit back here in broken toe and let's just take a quick little pause. <clears throat> and back to it, here we go, downward facing dog. If your wrists are really bothered today, we're gonna be on the wrists a lot, so you might wanna be switching in and out of uh, dolphin pose where the elbows are down. Here we go. Back up, it's completely okay to bring your knees to bend. Outer heels are down, big toes are plugging, rocket ships are coming from the arches of the feet. On the outside edge of the feet is an arch as well. On the outside edge of the foot, there's an arch there too. Can you feel that? Pull up those quadriceps, really rev up the engine on those legs and use the arms and the legs for the next five breaths to see how much length you can create in your spine. It's not about doing more actions. It's about staying here and being in the now 
and working what you have. Two. And beautiful, knees down. Let's take Vajrasana, point those toes back and sit down. <clears throat> so again, we are focusing on lateral body today, lateral body resisting the urge to twist. Okay, so it's going to get more challenging. <clears throat> Here we go. Downward dog. Step the feet back, please hip distance apart and find a push-up position. Find a push-up position. You can totally bring your knees down if you need to and fire up that belly lock. Gravity is trying to pull your belly to the floor, but you are floating it up. Notice the side bodies here, just like when we were sitting on our bottom. How do you lift the sides out of the top of the pelvis? Three. Four. Left knee comes down here. Bring the left knee into the center of your hands here so that you've got a little triangle action and pivot that right leg so that the left toes are facing the arch of that foot. Step the left hand right underneath your shoulder and we're gonna spread those left toes and come into Vashastasana prep. Take your arm up. So here's where we wanna start doing our rotation but challenge yourself to be pulling out of the waist and turning the front plane of your body towards us. <clears throat> now, with this left hip, level the pelvis. Level that pelvis as if you're still sitting down. Three. Play with that action, two, and back over here, and downward dog, using the arms and the legs to lengthen the spine, using the arms and the legs to lengthen, switching sides, bring your right knee down to the middle of the mat, shift the left leg out, arches of the feet, and take it over here, and find the level of the pelvis here. <clears throat> now, as we're playing with the level of the pelvis, those of you who are working a little bit deeper, bring your attention to the underneath the armpit, that rib cage. Imagine that there's a little handle pushing your ribs off the mat. Are you rotating the spine? See if you can level out that left and right side. You got two more breaths here. Trying to drag your side bodies out of that waist. One more deep breath. And beautiful. Back down to your dog. And using the arms and legs to lengthen. Keep those quads turned on. They get lazy. The upper kneecap, pull it up, pull it up. Good. On your next exhale, please walk yourself forward, bend your knees, and find Ardha Uttanasana flat back. Side bodies is what we're focusing on. Your tailbone is looking behind you, your heart is looking right at the floor, and you're lengthening the side bodies out of that waist. Quadriceps are turned on. One more deep breath, and exhale. Inhale, come all the way up, all the way up, all the way up and exhale into mountain pose. Okay, moving a little bit faster now. Take your blocks on either side of your mat. <clears throat> a lot of times our back pain is because these intercostal muscles get stuck, right? And so we're thinking about this area. Now coming into your mountain pose, I wanna play with this idea that we are gonna let our belly be very saggy and floppy. I'm not turning to the side because I'm not gonna do it, but my belly is very saggy and floppy, right? And I'm gonna do this here too. I'm gonna let this be very relaxed. Very, very relaxed. Like let it all hang out. Come on now, just drop it out. 
Just relax, relax, relax. Let all this relax. <laughs> Flattering. Just let it go, let it go, let it go. Just there's no need to hold it. Just let it all be saggy. Just let it be saggy. Where do you feel like you're still gripping? Just see if you can let it all go. Just ride that surfboard. Just let it go. You're not, you don't have control or own this body. Let this body just be. Let it just be like a sunflower. Keeping, very challenging, keeping it soft. I want you to start imagining that you're stitching up the sides here. So we could start here at the top of the hips here and start to stitch it like little tight stitches where your front body and your back body are soft, but you're starting to feel a little tightness in the side body, like you're pinning it together. It's hard, isn't it? Feels so nice. You're stitching up the side, but this is still very relaxed. The back muscles very relaxed and you're stitching it up. So in other words, our armpit is floating up and this is very tight, not very tight, but quite tight here along the seam of the side bodies. Our fingers are reaching down, but we are actually, action, is to be really resisting here on the side bodies as we're keeping this relaxed. Let's play with it. Inhale, reach your arms up. Take your right hand and grab your, sorry, take your left hand and grab your right arm and reach. So there's those stitches. Now, as you're stitching, you might also be pulling down because you don't want to tear those stitches, right? So we don't want to overly express. We want to keep that action happening here. And we're going to start to take our body over. Some of you can work a little deeper and you can cross the legs in front and plug in both big toes. Are you rotating here? Are you turning the torso? So this is the challenge. How do you keep the front plane open? Are you dropping and crashing on that left side? Can you keep that second side of the body open as well? Very challenging. One more big breath. Beautiful. Inhale, sweep it up. Come on up. Reset and let everything flop out again. Nice and wooly gooey. Stitch it up. Stitch it up. Belly is still very soft. Stitching it up. Arms up, right hand grabs the left, crossing the left in front if that's what's happening for you. Plug in your both your big toes. And again, you don't wanna pop those stitches, so you wanna be pulling down and up at the same time. You don't wanna be turning towards the back. You wanna be front forward here so that we're really stretching through the side body. And then are you crunching on that bottom side? Are you uh, concaving that right side? Keep lifting up, three, Two, and beautiful, come on back up to center and release. Getting a little bit challenging now. Start to feel this stitching action. This is relaxed. We're going into chair pose, okay? So as always, we can see our toes here. We're nice and tall, hands in prayer. Neck is long, so look here. I'm not doing this with my neck. I'm keeping my neck nice and long. I'm gonna shift the weight to my right foot. Okay, we're gonna swing one, swing two, swing three, stay in your chair, swing four, swing five, swing six, stay in chair and replace, switching sides. One, and swing, and two and swing don't forget what's happening with the feet you got both arches of those feet lifting one more and swing and swing back to chair and back up and pause stitch the sides relax the front and the back body again please hands in prayer sit down to chair hold it here 
Feel those toes lifting, feel yourself rooting. Shift the weight to the right foot, bring your left hip up. Are you hiking it up? Look here, am I concaving? I wanna keep this level here, one and two and three and four. Do your best, five and six, chair. Keep it level, switching sides, one and two and three and four and five and six keep it in chair and up very nice jump the feet apart so as i was saying what happens in the ankles happens in the knees happens in the hips happens in the shoulders happens in the neck we want to make sure what we're doing is affecting all parts of the body so you want to be noticing on this round i want you to fill your pelvis here now, sometimes we have a tendency to not do the back leg when we're doing the front leg. So that's what we're gonna be playing with right now. So hands at the top of your pelvis, side bodies long, side bodies long, stitched up. Take your right hand and push your hip in. See that? Push your hip in, keep it nice and level. When you're ready, start to turn yourself over. Start to find that triangle pose. Keep pushing in here on this back leg. Knees are sitting right over the toes and we're gonna bring our hand down to the floor. So you wanna be pushing this hip in and lifting that left rib cage. So we're looking for even ribs. We're keeping our body nice and level here and we're turning the ribs so that we're facing forward so that we really are front plane. Notice my forehead is a little bit higher than my chin. I'm not dropping it. Keep pushing in and keep lifting up. When you're ready, maybe you're ready, you'll take your arm up and hold. Side bodies long. You don't need to look to the sky today. We're trying to focus on front plane without rotation. Two. Put a soft bend on your left knee. Come on up to warrior two. Take your hand to that right hip again. Push it in. Push it in, holding it there, holding this pelvis level. Find length in your spine, reaching forward. Inhale, open those arms nice and wide, palms facing down. <clears throat> Keep this right hip in. This is not what we're doing, look here. So this is coming in, pelvis is level. When you're ready, side body's equal, stitch it up. This is soft, stitch it up. Lift those armpits, drop that hip crest. Lift the armpits, drop the hip crest, head sitting right on top and gaze over that left middle fingernail. Five deep breaths. Keep pushing in this right hip, keep that pelvis level. Okay, now slowly start to bend that left elbow and we're still pushing this in as we're dropping this other hip. Okay, now in order <clears throat> for me not to concave my bottom side here, I'm gonna have to drag my thigh bone back. I'm gonna have to drag my pelvis back so I can still feel that I'm lifting out of it. Some of you can bring your hand to the floor or to the block and you're trying to find that length of the, or the uh, position of the pelvis so that it's level so that you can draw, drag out of it. And then here we go. We're gonna find that neutral plane of our body. The work is on this left hip crest. Feel yourself left ribs are pulling out. Those of you who want to can add that arm. Keep dropping that right hip down and lifting one more deep breath. Reverse warrior, pull yourself up, drop this 
right arm and spread out, no rotation, leave the plane forward, reaching through, and then watch here, take this underneath your armpit and pull it down, stitch it up as you're reaching. Keep dropping that left hip crest. Three, two, oh, it feels so good, and release. Close that hip and pause. Come on now, that's some good stuff. <clears throat> Second side. Triangle again. Again, look at this. So a lot of us going to jet this back hip out. Tip it back. We want it to be level. Why? Because the spine is level. If I'm doing this, my spine has to counter that. So focus on keeping that pelvis level, right? So that we can have the length of our spine. That's always our primary focus. You know what's happening on those knees. You know they're sitting over the second, third toe. You know you have this arch of the foot on both sides. So you're feeling this magnetic pull of energy. Start to tip yourself over here, feeling that yourself pulling in and find your block. Find your block and play with the idea that both sides of your spine are level. You're finding a plane of your body foot forward. And yes, we are rotating in order for that to happen, but I don't want to think about it as rotating. I want to think about it as just letting that hip, this right hip, increase this ability to lengthen on both sides. A lot of work happening on that bottom leg. Those of you who want to can take that arm up as well. And you're trying to lengthen through both sides here. Right hip crest moving, you're lifting out of there. Two more deep breaths. Beautiful, when you're ready, bend that knee, pull yourself up here for warrior two. And then here we did it again. See how it's moving? Can you find this pushing in and getting level through the pelvis? Getting level through the pelvis. Level, 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 level. That's fun to do. Try that, boop, 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 boop. Okay, you're dropping that left side and you're lifting that right side. Keep that nice length. Inhale, reaching forward, Virabhadrasana two, warrior two. Drive it in there. Keep both sides level. And when you're ready, take your gaze to the right this time. Keep sliding in this back hip. Find stability and find ease. When it gets too hard, you go in deeper. Side bodies are level and long. Here we go. Dropping that right elbow. Keep pulling this hip in. Keep dragging the other hip back. You're trying to find that level, that balance. You could take the hand of the block. Those of you working deeper can start to find that upper arm length. Feel that action. Both sides reaching. How do you make it long on both sides? Turning that front body towards us. And then again, take your underneath your armpit, drag it down, lift it up, feel that extension. Think about the bones here. Three more breaths. One more big breath. And reverse warrior, come on up and tilt it to the other side. Feel that action lifting out of both sides. Oh. Beautiful, and up we go. Close this hip and pause.
Beautiful. When you're ready, gently walk your feet in. Walk them in, walk them in, walk them in. And come back to neutral. Take your left arm up, please. Reaching from left wrist to left ankle. Reaching, keeping it level though. We're just reaching through. The belly is soft, but you're still stitched together. You're still stitched together here. Bend that left knee and bring them together. Feel that crunch, feel that release. Inhale, exhale. Not twisting. Two more. Beautiful. Inhale, reach, reach, reach. And exhale, float down. Second round, arm up, right leg. Pushes away from the right arm. Keep the front plane. Stitch this up. Keep it level. And bend the right knee and pull hip and elbow together. One. There's no rush here. Feel what's happening. Two. Three. Four, last one, really feel it. And holding, holding, and release. Soften the belly, soften the back, stitch up your sides. Let's head towards Downward dog. Inhale, sweep it up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up, nice flat back. Exhale, step it back to your powerful downward dog again, remembering the hands and legs are, legs are about length. Find a push-up position. Do what we did in the beginning where you brought your knee down or pivot into Vashastasana. Lift out of your bottom ribs here. Find that level. Find that level. You're not turning here. Some of you can lift that bottom leg or the top leg. Line them bones up, them bones in, bones in. Beef bones, reach, 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 reach. And when you're ready, pause. <sighs> Same side. Same side, push up position. Bring your knee down if you want to, or Vashastasana. Feel the plane here. Let the belly be soft. Stitch up those ribs. Maybe you're doing tree pose. Trying your best not to turn, just facing forward, leveling out that pelvis. Any variation you want to do here, except turn and come on out and pause. Okay, second side, second round. Whatever variation you want, you could do your leg lifts. You could find the tree. Try to level out your pelvis and find that front plane 
looking forward one more breath and pause Gosh, it feels so good. It's like a big old yawn in your bones. Just putting everything back in place. This is a very therapeutic pose. It doesn't feel therapeutic, but it is. It's very therapeutic. Here we go. Second round, final round. Vashastasana. Leg up if you want. Side rikshasana if you want. And find the plane of your body looking forward. No twisting here. Stitch up that rib. Stitch up that side body, level out your pelvis. Three, two, and downward dog. Put the majority of your weight in your legs. <sighs> Lengthen out that beautiful spine. And gently, knees come down, and we come to how we started, Upavista Konasana. If you need to be sitting on something, feel free to do that. Okay? Feeling that fire up action. Pelvis is level. Ribs are tied in. Take your strap around the left foot. Take your arm, your hand, and grab a hold of that strap with the palm facing up so that we can keep our shoulder open. Again, if you need a block, this is how we started our class today. Okay, drag this right hip in, push it in as you're coming down to the side here. Keep dropping this right sits bone. Again, if you don't need the strap or you don't need the block, do the work here, but you're feeling this leverage, this pulling and pushing at the same time. Quads are turned on, 12 breaths here. Stretch out that side body, classic stretch. Notice I'm not doing this. Look here, I'm not doing this. I'm keeping our integrity right now. I'm trying to make both sides of our spine long. Pelvis is level. Quadriceps, I just noticed mine were sleeping. I had to wake them up, wake them up. Keep reaching through those left ribs. Reach those left ribs to the toes. Long on the bottom side as well as the top. Where is the ease in this pose? Where can you stop? Where can you let go? Where do you not need more? Where can you just be content and grateful and appreciate where you are? Five more breaths, just stop doing it. Do all the action steps, but stop the craving and the attachment to another level. Just be, stability and ease is what we seek. So nice, so nice. Feel that, wowza. Good stuff. Switch your ruby. What's this side gonna have in store? We have no idea. How fun is that? So again, pushing this left hip in now, lifting this right rib cage, start to make your way over here. What do you need? What do you need? 
Turn on those quads, feel yourself firing up, keep dropping that left sits bone in. And notice how my spine wants to look at the knee. I'm trying to turn my front plane towards you here without losing the rest of the integrity. Now there's a place that you're gonna find, maybe today, maybe if you continue practicing yoga at some other point, where it just feels peaceful. Even in the most challenging poses, you're seeking that ease. Sometimes you have to go in deeper in order to see it. Activate those quads if you've lost them. Keep the sense of being fired up. Five more breaths. Beautiful, one more deep breath, and then gently, gently, gently come on up. Beautiful. All right, we're gonna slow things down now. We're gonna take a loop that's as big as, along, as long as your leg. Gently bring your legs together, and let's make our way to the floor here. Just hug your knees in, just feel what's happening in the back. Again, noticing how we're relaxing in the front and the back body, but our stitches are still happening underneath our arms. We're still tied in there, but everything else can relax. Just rocking if that feels good to you. Two more breaths. I think every yoga class should be five hours long. Okay, take your strap around the right leg and put it right behind your knee and then hook it on the shoulder, the right leg, right shoulder. And we're gonna come into fire log. So take your other leg, your bottom leg, your left leg and walk it over and let it drop into a bound angle pose. If you need a block underneath there, go ahead. Okay, so let that relax. And then take your top leg and see if you can fire, fire, find a fire log here where you're dropping the knee to the other foot and getting this beautiful stretch in the neck. Palms are facing down, look away from the strap and let's enjoy this for eight breaths. Keep the toes turned on to protect those knees. And aiming that top knee to the bottom foot. And stretching out that beautiful neck. I like to have my hands down to the sides with the palms down, but if you'd rather take them up or any other variation, feel free. Continuing to let go of things that you think you own and continuing to let go of things that you expect from yourself in this pose. Just let it be. Just ride the waves of your breath.
non-attachment, appreciating what is. Alan Taylor, who is a mentor of mine, often tells a story about the worst karma a person can suffer. The worst karma a person can suffer is not being grateful for what they have. Because if you're not grateful for what you have right now, it's never going to be enough for you. You're always searching for that dangling carrot. So can you just look around and say, yeah, this is my life and these are my clothes and these are my kids and this is my spouse and this is my home and this is my work and this is my body and this is enough. I'm enough. I appreciate so much all that I have. Yes, I want more. Yes, I'm open to having more, but I really am satisfied with what I have now. I'm content, right? All right, come on out. Just feels so nice when you feel content, doesn't it? All right, switch your ruby. Let's take it around the left leg and around the left shoulder and same thing, find the fire log in the back bottom leg and then aim that foot to the knee and then drop this other knee too. Look away from the strap. But what we do instead of being content, instead of sitting and just the noticing of all that we have is we busy our minds with ways to fix it. Well, if I had purple towels, that would make the bathroom look so much better. Well, if my husband would not wear those Crocs when we go for dinner, then, then he would be a great husband. If this happened, then this would be better. You know, we're constantly, you know, overdoing and fixing and controlling and, and uh, presenting ourselves in a way but what if it just is, and it's enough? So just sitting in gratitude right now, it's all enough, you're enough, I'm enough, this posture's enough, this body's enough. Just ride the waves of the surfboard. Feels so nice to swim in appreciation. To remember that what you really need, you have, I have, we have right now. Maybe not in five minutes. Maybe we have to go do something really stressful later. But right now, right now, it's all good. It's all in appreciation. And if we can live that in every moment, then we are living the meditation. We are living in our true nature, like a baby. Beautiful. And slowly take your time and come on out of that. If you want a suggestion today, I would say tighten up that strap and put it around your thighs and take your Shavasana in a neutral position where your knees are bent so that your back can feel it. You could do whatever you want with your arms. If there's something else that you know you like to do in order for you to feel closed, then feel free, of course, to make time for that. This is our final week in the healthy habit of breathing and meditation, meditation, knowing who we are. And so today's pondering is what if you are just simply a witness appreciating all that you see. How cool would that be? Not getting caught in the storm, not getting caught in the chaos or the toxicity or the negativity, but just watching, just witnessing, being in action, 
you know, being alive, being aware, but not controlled or controlling, just witnessing. Again, how free would you feel if you didn't have to do all that? So we're seeking balance this week. We're seeking balance in our side bodies. And we know that it sometimes takes some work in order to find balance when life feels a little out. So that's your ponder if you want one today, this week. So find your Shavasana, let yourself soak in all this yummy stuff that you've just done. As always, may it be of benefit to you. I so much hope that it is. Thank you so much for showing up for yourself, keeping your light on so that we can benefit from your light and spread it. Deep bows to you all. Deep, deep, deep bows and namaste. Talk to you soon.